Welcome to another beautiful day in Jerusalem. You can see that the children are going to school. Those are Greek Orthodox um, Christians, as I believe, going to a Greek Orthodox um, school, mainly because it's the Greek Orthodox neighborhood in the Christian quarter of the old city of Jerusalem. Here it is. And I just came from the Catholic uh, neighborhood of the Christian quarter, and the Catholic neighborhood is straight and to the left. Uh, then I'm actually at the Christian quarter, straight, and look how beautiful it is. I'm dedicating that video to everyone who watch it, but especially to a couple, and for the husband it's a surprise. And I'm talking about Lisa M. Carter and Paul S. Carter about how should you get your own cross. Uh, I will talk later on, but first let me show you one of the gates, one of the entrances to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre that not a lot of people knows about it. It's called the Arch of Virgin Mary, and it was one of a few entrances what you see is only the upper part of it and the pillow um, arch. Uh, you will recognize it when you reach to the main entrance of the church. Sadly, the Muslims, uh, after the um, victory of Salahuddin in the 12th century, um, sealed all of the uh, entrances except of one, and from that time, or even before that, uh, Christian had to pay a lot of money to go into the church and they cover and surrounded that church with uh, so many um, masks and uh, then, then the church can be bigger than what it is now and it used to be more, let's say, twice bigger than the church of today but, but this is the symbol of uh, Conquering the city. This is the city. This is a symbol of uh, a very important city that so many, so many people are occupying, destroying, and build their their city there as well. And everyone did it. And um, then this is the cross that dedicated to the Carter family. Um, but I want you to understand that you can have it as well. Go into the description of that video. It's beneath the video and you will see how should you get it. The deal includes um, the cross and there are so many different kinds of crosses, a video, and of course I'm sending the cross to you. Then now you know how should you have it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe my channel, please. Then we are on the, the way to the church of the Holy Sepulchre together with the Latin cross this time. We will leave the Christian Quarter Street and we will enter to St. Helen Street. But I want you to see two different Marys. The right one, you can see that Mary is smiling. This is Mary of Bethlehem of the Nativity Church. And uh, she's smiling because she knows that uh, it's a first born uh, son, I mean, give me one reason not to smile, but here, in a way, 40 days later, when she'd been at the Jewish temple, St. Simon told her that her son would die in front of her eyes. Then from that moment, she's not smiling. Then, let's continue to the church. Lately, the church is very crowded with so many disciples, which is good, good for me as well. I'm working from time to time, not a lot, and I say that I'm working, let's say, six or seven days a week, uh, a week, I wish, uh, a month, but I'm happy. The rest of the time, I'm visiting the city and uploading videos to YouTube. Then we're entering now to the main plaza of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the Church of the Holy Tomb, and it's a special day, I will talk about it soon. Uh, but you must understand that that church belongs to so many. 
it's a lot like your churches. Uh, their church belongs to the Catholic, belongs to the Greek Orthodox and the Armenians, but the Syrian church, the Syrian church, the Ethiopian church, the Copts have their own right in that amazing church. Welcome to the facade of the church, which is mainly from 12th, 11th, end of the 11th and the 12th century. Built by the Crusader, and you can see that it actually looks like a fortress. It's not like a regular church, because we are talking about um, um, Crusaders who came to here, but we are talking about few Crusader, let's say. 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 crusaders and around them so many enemies. Then let me just sit here and rest and then I will continue. If I'm coughing, and it might be, then don't be afraid. This is my asthma season and uh, I will survive. It's uh, September 14th, it is a special day at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And um, then before we will talk about everything else, oh, you see they are bringing another heavy thing into the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. They are renovating the church. Uh, every um, domination can do whatever they want in their own uh, chapels, but they cannot do that in the regular, uh, in the public um, area that belongs to everyone. And for here, you can see here that two, I don't know, hats or whatever, I don't know how to call it, uh, but it's a storerooms that um, in it you can find part of the ancient floor of the church they decided after many years to actually um, deal with it to renovate it then in that case what they are doing they are taking out the um, stones they are excavating beneath it and soon one day they will tell us what they actually found there and until then they are restoring uh, the stones at those two places there's another place in the uh, church, and if you see a wooden church next to the uh, uh, tomb, is the site that they already excavated, and they are, um, uh, um, I don't know, renovating the stones or whatever they choose to do. Then, then until then, the stones, which I can say that only all, I can call it the holy stones, are there. But this is the day of the Feast of the Cross. This is a Salvation Day. Um, the exaltation um, of the Holy Cross. The triumph of the cross. There are so many uh, names um, for that beautiful um, holiday. And sadly, not every Christian knows about it. It's all about the finding of the true cross by St. Alan. But not only that. The dedication of the churches built by Emperor Constantine um, on the site of the Holy Sepulchre, which we are going to visit, and Mount Calvary, which we are going to visit. But it's not only there, because if you take it to the 7th century, uh, the Persian, the Sassian, actually stole a, the um, true cross from the church, and um, at 629, a few years later on, it's the res uh, restoration of the true cross to Jerusalem, or back to Jerusalem, um, by the Byzantine Emperor Heraclius. Then, in that case, so many reasons to celebrate the uh, Feast of the Cross, and there's so many things that I can talk about the cross, but I don't want to be bored. Boring. Um, for example, one thing that I love is um, the idea of um, the tree of the fruit of heaven that Adam and, eat, Adam and Eve ate, and then they hide themselves from God himself. Oh, look at the kitty. 
they hide himself from God himself, but Jesus was crucified on it to complete the mission to take our sins with. Then another thing that I can think about uh, a wooden cross is the um, uh, stick of Moses, of, um, of even Abraham, that uh, they used to walk with it and they, so many good things happen of it. The leadership. Look at the kitten, let me see. Let me see. I love kittens, and I know at least one person. Two. That's gonna be nice soon. Um, and there's more, but I think it's better for me to run away from here. <laughs> Look at the kitten. I can stay here forever. Then, uh, then what you see here is something of it. People ask you about the ladder there. Then the story tells us that the ladder, the second story, belongs to the Armenian and they wanted um, to clean the windows from the outside. And then they took the ladder out and started to clean it. But the Greek auditors came to them and said, Who on that? This is yours. The facade belongs to everyone, and until they figure out who owns the facade, um, it will be like that. And I do have pictures from 1850, 1850, and the ladder was there. Um, it's funny, but it's actually sad. I, I, I believe that if everyone will agree to pray together and to own those sites together, the church will be even more beautiful and um, the relationship between the Christians themselves will be even better. And let's pray for that too, all right? All right, let's go in to the church. a few reasons. First of all, it's empty. Secondly, I can hear the cops praying here. Such a beautiful thing to see. Um, today it's a Catholic day of the, the feast. Then they were started to organize the feast of the Holy Cross. Exhalation. Uh, soon they can see that they cover the entrance of the Greek Orthodox. They're already trying to prepare the site. And I believe they will start to excavate here. This is the next stage of the floor, on the floor of the Church of the You can see the tomb of Jesus, 
uh, at the end of the video, I will enter with the cross into the tomb and bless it for you. Uh, Lisa and Paul. Now, Lisa and Paul are 25 years together. This is amazing. Lisa's got a wish. And um, Paul, you know exactly what she wants from you. I know that you had a um, Catholic um, wedding two years ago, which is amazing. And uh, But you know exactly what she wants. I want push you to do that, but you know your wife better than me. And if Lisa wants it, Lisa, she will, will get it at the end, and why to argue about it? But it's between you and Lisa and God. It's so nice to be in the church uh, early morning when the tourists are not here yet. That's why I reached the church at 6 uh, a.m. Sorry, 7. I reached Jerusalem at 6, and then I came back to here. Oh, this is the place where Jesus' body was... Um, purified before they put him in the tomb that we just saw, then before someone else will come, let me first bless the cross here for you, Lisa, and actually for you, Paul. You see that I wrote your name in Hebrew as well, only language. And let me explain you what we did until now and what we are going to do. We started from the, actually, the end. And this is the tomb of Jesus. Uh, it doesn't look like that now. It doesn't look like a cave, I mainly because it's been destroyed so many times. Um, we blessed the cross at, um, at the stone that the purified the body of Jesus, you can see there. Mary and the agony of Mary, the agony of the Marys and the women, John the disciple, the nails. Joseph of Ramitia gave Jesus his own tomb and Nathimenus. And now we're heading to the crucifixion, please, before it's going to be too crowded. We will enter through the Catholic part of the church. And we will leave the Golgotha, the Calvary. Look how beautiful those are. From uh, the Greek Orthodox part. This is the feast of it. Triumph of the cross. As and as we're talking about masses, to have a mass next to the cross.
It is so important, especially in the day of the, that holy feast. I was blessed the cross at the crucifixion spot. start the ceremony of the Feast of the Cross and uh, that's where Jesus was nailed to the cross let me put that and bless it for you Lisa and Paul This is another part of the Via Dolorosa. That's where Mary, that's a Pietà, Mary holding the dead body of his son. Uh, when she was at the temple, at the presentation, Saint Simon told her that her son will die in front of her eyes. It will be like a spear when added to your heart. Then you can see the spear in the heart of Mary. that in the background you can hear the cups chanting. Then, this is John, and to the left is Mary, the mother, and while Jesus was on the cross, he asked John to take care of his mother. You can see the bedrock under the glass. This is the Greek Orthodox chapel. Um, the one with the lights, it's um, the Catholic one, Latin Catholic. Why there's light there and it's so dark here? Because the feast of today is of the Protestant and the Catholic. A week from now, it's going to be here at the Catholic, at the Greek Orthodox. Part, mainly because they're using different calendars. I wanted to see more of the miracles that happen here today. And let me remind you that the dedication of, of uh, the church was at 355 AD. You can count for yourself how many years ago. Yes, I know that there is another option from the 19th century that's called a garden tomb but uh, let's face it this is from the 4th century and um, there's so many traditions here that connected to our feast of today of the Holy Cross the tree of the salvation in a way then we are heading now to the lowest place of the church. In a special day. Mm. 
There is a special smell here. <sighs> Love it. And as you can see, the minute I entered the church, I didn't cough. This is the Armenian Chapel, which is a beautiful chapel, but it tells us uh, so many stories. Uh, but one that I want you to, the one that I want you to, I want to talk about it, is of death. Heraclius bring, brings back the cross to here, the true cross. You must understand then today there are so many pieces of the cross and so many people are laughing at that. But when St. Helen came to here, she cut the true cross into three pieces. One she gave to, the, to Constantinople, which is Istanbul today, the Byzantine uh, emperor. Uh, third, she brought to um, uh, Rome. And third, was here, and that one was stolen by the um, Persian at the seventh century. And you can see the Heraclius bringing him back the emperor. Now, why it's here in the um, Armenian chapel? Because the Armenian knows that the, the um, that Heraclius came from the Armenian uh, church. And we are celebrating today the day, but it's not the only thing. Let's continue to the lowest place of the church to see where St. Helen found the three crosses. Mm. Now I can see that um, uh, the people who prayed there, then let me talk about it here, and then we will continue to the chapel. St. Helen, Elena, came to here by the order or by her wish, but uh, with the uh, idea of Constantine who asked her to be here. Constantine was the one who converted the Roman Emperor into Christianity in the fourth century. Until that, Christianity was a non-legal religion. And if we're talking about that, the Armenians were converted as a nation to Christianity 30 years before the Constantine did it to the rest. And in that game, they were here uh, 30 years before uh, St. Helen. Then St. Helen ordered to look for the evidence of Jesus in the Holy Land. And one of the places that they took her is here. Now, let me tell you something about the location of the church. It's not the best location in Jerusalem, but traditionally it's there. Remember that until the fourth century, you couldn't visit um, any place. There were no churches, it was a non-legal religion. If you say that you're a Christian, uh, then the animals ate you and the amphitheaters, or they killed you. Then when the disciples came to here, they couldn't pray, but they could tell their children he was crucified here. This is his tomb and resurrection area. And they could tell them that here we hide those crosses. Then when she came to here, she looked for the three crosses, and there's so many uh, stories about um, how she recognized which one of the three is the cross of Jesus. But let me tell you another story that I heard lately. There was a funeral of people who went through that area, and that can happen because it was a crucif uh, it was a burial site area. That church was outside the walls at that time. And uh, she took one of the crosses. Um, nothing happened to the body. Second cross. Nothing happened to the body. I think you know what happened when the true cross touched the body of the dead. Then let me show you where it actually happened. Um, it's the lowest place of the 
the church, and you can see that it used to be a quarry of King Herod. King Herod built his city uh, through those stones, and the quarry is outside uh, the holy site. And then, uh, after he died, and before the Romans took that place for themselves, a lot of people have been buried here. And let me show you the quarry and the exact spot of finding the three crosses. This is where they found the three crosses. Now there are two walls here, one from the 11th and the other one from the 12th century. And there are many, so, so many crosses here. And they checked it lately. Graffiti. And we thought that it's from the 12th Crusade time. But now there are people who the excavator believes that at least some of them are from the 16th century. Still old. Hmm. Oh, sorry of my heavy breathing. It's okay. This is another storeroom in the center of um, the one who excavating and renovating the floor you can see the stones here some of them are very old some of them are from 12th century oh gosh it's difficult you can still hear the You can still hear the Coptic chanting. This is the prison of Christ. The prison inside your church tells us that when Jesus came here, he wasn't crucified immediately. You know, everything takes time. Now they are renovating the floor at the restrooms area. Wow, I don't know if I can see it. Let me see a little bit of it. They try to hide it from me, but I will just tell you that there's a big wall beneath. I don't know what wall, what is the wall it's all about. But let me show you a little bit of it. You can see a little bit of the wall now. 
Let me see if I can do something with it. Here it is, here it is, in the background. Beautiful, isn't it? It's so holy, it's so nice to be here alone. You can see another part of the Golgotha in front of you. If you reach that part of the video, 36 minutes, it means that you are devoted or to history or to Jesus. And um, please, uh, being part of my family is by um, turning yourself into my subscribers and you can ask me any question that you want. Thank you for being with me in that great moment. The tourists are arriving, but we've been here before them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lisa. Surprise, Paul. I'm so happy that you are watching my videos. Thank you, Lisa, for telling me that. Bye-bye.